Now, coming up right now is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up that big, old, oversized can of whoop ass for y'all. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, there will be no Grim Leftovers tomorrow night, but check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows that come up throughout the week. You never know, there may be some surprises, too, so just stay tuned to RLM Radio and you'll be better off. All right, well, you all have yourselves a happy bluesier, and uh, I'll see you next week, uh, or next decade, I should say. It's now weird, and, and what is Peace. weird now... Contended Cricket, did we get our marketing all done? Is it all done over? Is it all over? Or we got the celebrations coming? And to all you all, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Ramalama, Ding Dong, Geist, Mithra, Gir Krishna, Happy Holy Day, and I hope you all had a, have had a cool Yule as we start moving through into what? The New Year. Interestingly named 2020. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. Have we gained the hindsight in 2020 to engage the future as I've been trying to get us to do in a more correct fashion and I'm going to talk about something I really wasn't too much uh, focused on it's just so much to keep up with but it's becoming um, maybe more of an object lesson maybe I can tie up some of what I've been doing over the last uh, decade or so that I don't talk about too much I risk making many mistakes here because it's the beginnings of how I'm going to expose a little bit how I go through a bit of a problem, a potential problem, to anticipate how we're going to, how anybody or how I would respond to it. And uh, regarding what's going on in Virginia, and that it, it, it eventuates itself out in the regular world, uh, the regular world, where there's not much going on as far as a group of people getting activated to do something but in ways that I'm seeing is uh, devoid of an actual process. And that is our problem. As I said, we're two steps behind what we really need to be. And uh, we don't necessarily look at things the way we ought to in order to do them more properly, to put ourselves in a position in these um, dire straits that we've developed since 2009-11, uh, 2001-9-11 stuff, that to put everybody on the presumption of guilt and uh, enemy combatant status that I see over the years have been still people don't understand that and they still walk themselves into the problems and or they get marginalized. And part of the whole deal is becoming marginalized. And so you don't want to do that to yourself. And I've, I've shown you, uh, explained year, uh, year after year how to start to do that. Before I get over to that, I want to bring up some things. Uh, again, more things we can do. Do we take the hindsight uh, that we've gained, uh, the 2020 hindsight that we gained for the 2020 year and use that as an action call to actually start implementing a, a pushback at all. Is an, when is enough enough is when you start acting and, again, don't make excuses, whatever they what you come up with. But before I go farther here, <laughs> always, BT, this is uh, the broadcast of this, this uh, episode is a BTWRLM351. For those of you on the uh, postcast, pastcast, recast, whatever cast you got, the blogcast, uh, BTWRLM351 to get the links that I may go to here. For those of you that are interested to get addresses or uh, get involved, uh, that's what the blogcaster starts to become. It's more of a place you can read the links so you get the bigger story, as I've told you uh, in the last few weeks again, always, uh, that there's a whole lot more to read. And uh, I hope you appreciated last week the semantic semantism uh, to move against semitism and uh, be showing that the uh, anti-Semite claimers are using semantics to defeat everybody. It's the same method that's used by the alternative dispute resolution people. It's the same co-option of language that is so important to keep track of. If you understand what I did last week, calling the broadcast anti-semantism instead of anti-semitism, and how, that's how you use that to combat the condition, you'll realize what I've been saying, again, in, a different, in other subject matters, why it's so important to find a foundational objective basis, and we call that the black and white, what I call the black and white, it's the law from foundational principles in order to reassert back, because these people are coming at you with a twisted uh, vocabulary, and that's the reason why they do that, because that's how we communicate. So 
you have to be in the position where the vocabulary is not is not twisted. It's straight shooting, you know, straight talking, and it's a narrow path. It's real easy to stay there. And once you start getting how that works, the workload becomes a lot less. The hard part is the run up for how you figure out where, what the battlefield is and what you, where you might uh, what your strategies and tactics might be. And I'm going to do a little bit, I think, of that. Like I say, I'm feeling uncomfortable to do that that way, but I'm going to do it anyway uh, to kind of show you how my my thoughts are on how I would start to begin to address something. I'm getting the advanced information, uh, the reconnaissance on a condition uh, so that I can anticipate that condition, whether or not I end up drawing into it or maybe to advance it to some other people that they can pick up. And that's partly why I want to talk today. Those of you that want to do something, again, you can pick up what I'm doing and you can take it again as the lead. I'll show you where to start. I'll do some of the basic reconnaissance. I certainly can't cover it all. There's so much to think about, but my mind works in an instant flash that I, I'm out. I'm thinking of things and making my categories and possibilities. I'm hierarchically, hierarchically is that a word? Uh, 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 situating what I'm looking at with application of law and remedies and things like, and, and then also more importantly, what the response from a, an adversary would be. And so there's a lot going on in my mind that happens in a lot, a very quick fashion. That it will happen to you once you get enough background. Uh, just you start applying it. It's just the tools that you apply. You know, you know when you need the certain size wrench. You know when you need a screwdriver. You know when you need the hammer. You know when you need the mallet because nothing will work. Uh, you, you 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 find you know you learn how to find the things that you need to do the job. And that's kind of what I'm going to punish. Hopefully show you. Now getting right to it here, off that point and onto something else very important, but something that in another subject matter you can absolutely do something about. For those of you that are interested in home homeopathy. Uh, the F, apparently, by this again, these stories are just the notice to us that's going on. Uh, access to homeopathy threatened by the latest FDA action. And so those of you that are into alternative type medicines, if you're into homeopathy, uh, you should be getting involved with this. This is the proper time. There's no jeopardy in my mind when you get to the agencies. I've told you how to engage. And so this is not like a threat to you. You don't have to deal with a cop with a gun. Uh, but these people do it on regulation. They interfere with your right to your own your inherent right to self uh, uh, self treat and uh, on things and I would understand this very carefully on things that have been for a long time uh, time maybe even I don't even know the history of homeopathy uh, I think it's gone on if you can find evidence of it from like thousands and thousands of years given that the case then you can bring forward that this was inherent in the people to do you want to counter what the FDA is doing to stop homeopathy by rule by what do they do? They bring homeopathy as a drug. And now they, they call it, here we go to the semantics again. They call it a drug. It's really a natural uh, natural thing inherent in people. We're going to talk about this inherency a little bit when we move into Virginia. Uh, this inherent, and you'll see it's written right in the Constitution. And that's what the kind of objective basis you're looking for. The, the homeopathy is under threat because they're going to change homeopathic medicines to uh, um, new drugs and when they do that they have to go through the process when they do that there's no company that really can afford to do that uh, process testing it would be like taking an aspirin and forcing an aspirin to have to follow the uh, the new guidelines of a new drug I'd, I've been told as I read plenty of information that an aspirin would not even pass because of how things have changed and this is all we can go through all the reasons obviously this is the bottom line this is about uh, monopolization of, the, of, uh, of care for you, what you choose, and this is an infringement on your inherent right to care for yourself and your inherent right to acquire and have available to you. And this is, again, these are consistent. I don't care what subject matter you hit. You're going to have consistent uh, th um, basis, foundation to work from. You have the right to acquire this stuff, and you have the right to acquire it from somebody who's, who's providing it for you. This is across the board. That's why I say when you get property rights, you have the right to acquire property. This becomes critical in mining. There's nothing I really that I have to go far from what I've developed in protecting our mining claims as property, the grants, and all that. So it's all the same. It reduces to all the same thing. You'll be dealing in grants or in antecedent authorities and and or um, acknowledgments of, of obligations and duties or trusts. And uh, anyway, so let's move on. There's a lot to say today. My mind is, is all over the place today, but uh, I've got to focus in on trying to show you how you look at all this stuff and how it's you can start to deal with it. Some of you have gotten involved with the agencies and you found out that it, they, they delay you. And I've told you that's what they do. You just got to keep on them. And then you got to keep, and then there's a way to write a letter to get an answer back. And when they stop 
responding to you and they have a duty to, you find the duty that they have to keep you knowledgeable, that's where you can set up your future injunction. But they didn't intend to do what they should have done. If they go contrary to what you, you wanted and it was uh, improper what they did. And the same thing here. They're going to make a new drug status for homeopathy. I don't know how they can do that. They're just going to do it. This is that semantic adjustment, the legalism. It's all the same stuff. But now, because I see it's a draft proposal, I know we have an administrative process. You all, any of you can jump in. Uh, it'll be sh really shame on you all for not stepping up. If you don't at least jump in and give yourself standing to go stop this, this type of uh, extension of a jurisdi commercial jurisdiction into the inherent rights of people, to access um, medicines for themselves. If you don't stop it, and then you, ha whether or not you complain in the future, shame on y'all. I don't know what more to say. I can't cover all this stuff. I can just be on the broadcast and tell you, here's another another front of attack against people and their inherent rights. And you need to be able to start learning how to in incorporate that language in in your um, in, in your communication. Be commu and communicate that. Show the objective extensions are too far, and that they don't have the right to make new drugs out of old things. No different than uh, what we've been seeing, the encroachment on patents for natural processes, which were never supposed to be done. Again, I mean, all this stuff can be attacked, but we've got to have a people that are stand up. Do we have the hindsight of the of 2020 hindsight of the 20 years prior, how they'd done us in, how I've explained how they'd done you in, how I predicted they would do you, and how they're going to continue to do you in if you'd stay silent? The crickets that you all seem to be. Here's a call to action for those of you that want to have you be able to treat yourself. This is no different than what happened with the marijuana. And there was another story about the marijuana that went down in flames. Uh, I, like I should get to that. Uh, anyway, so uh, as far as the uh, Democratic Party being in control and you think you're going to go through there, no. This is all about big business monopoly. And I don't, offices of profit, I think, are all around this. And that's why we're seeing the problem. We're not, a, we're not an educated mass of people that are vigilant and attack the encroachments against us. Despite something like this, something that the FDA also agreed to, vaccine fail, whooping cough outbreak closes Texas school despite 100% vaccination rate. 100% vaccination rate, and they still had a breakout, is the proof that you start compiling to show that there, this is not done underneath the objective standards they're supposed to. And I, I've told you how to do this over years. I don't even know what broadcast to go send you to. To, to, for those of you that might hear this, whooping cough outbreak closes Texas schools. If we didn't see this coming, uh, I don't know why you didn't see it coming. And here it is, 100% didn't solve it. They're claiming 95 should have solved it. That's a big buffer window I've been telling you how to exploit. And here we have the proof. Okay, so uh, there's no excuse uh, that we have. This is evidence. This is not a story in the news to me. This is evidence of the failure of those semantically coming at you, utilizing special terminology and words to cover. They're like, we would call them euphemism. I would call them euphemisms if they were almost a joke or a, a soft place to land. But these are killer decisions. These are, these are killing, uh, they're not euphemisms, these are killing semantics regarding the exploitation of rules. And if you're not there to stop it, they're just going to continue these people. And so. Do I, read, do I have to read the story? 100% vaccination rate fail? They say 95 is enough to keep it happen, uh, from happening. And here's the other side of that, where you see that the new drugs uh, in homeopathy, the other angle here is that they want, the FDA does not sanctify safety. Otherwise, they wouldn't have vaccines. You wouldn't have a vaccine court, do they? And so this is the other side of that homeopathy problem. You would assert that they don't have the right to make something they can't show as harmful a new drug to be regulated. And you have to flip that burden of you showing, or the industry showing harm, non-harm, safety. You have to say the FDA can't show it's harmful to be a regulated medicine, because it's not a medicine. It's an inherent right of yours to do medicine for yourself. They don't have the right to steal that from you under the color of commerce. That's a grant you didn't extend as a people, you didn't extend to a federal agency, or a state agency for that matter. We'll get that as we're moving in here toward, slowly getting toward Virginia. All these things, these concepts are all the same. You just put them on the subject matter and you twist them into what they're supposed to be relative to the black and white. In this case, it would be constitutions. I'm talking antecedent rights, things that existed prior to, prior to government. And let me offer something that I've read uh, here over in the past. It's been, de it's been de and I think this was de coming from the, de the Supreme Court. They called these types of rights that were before your civil rights, your civil liberties, 
the things that were created when the compact of people came together uh, came together in compact to create so-called states uh, they had what I what you call inherent rights what I call antecedent rights their rights before the formulation of a government the Supreme Court I think I've heard states that this is your pre-political rights if you didn't think this is all about politics and you never better not take a side uh, you better be neutral to those parties because they use like as I told you they've used uh, they burn the, they'll burn this thing called America from each end of that candle and they will consume this place and we'll have what will have been consumed by it the 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 politics here you have pre-political rights in other words you have pr rights prior to the political formulation of any political jurisdiction I've told you the United States was a political jurisdiction I've told you that before you read any any document that talks to you about the history of the United States this is a political place okay so you start learning all this stuff in the basis you lay the foundation you start to run with those thoughts as you start to correlate what happens against us and you or any others and you want to stop it so here's a perfect proof that 100 percent vaccination rate is a fail that 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 undercuts what the fda was uh, like the theories the fda used for its agreement that vaccines were anything that they were even viable that they were safe to a level that they even that they could even limit the risk is even at risk here against the fda the same thing you'll attack and use when you go after those of you that will step up and do a and, and in that other article you get the tab and access to uh, the, the homeopathy may be killed by the FDA article there's I think uh, they show you the the number the document number you have to use or the docket number they give you the address I, I wouldn't just go respond by that article I'd use that as a lead to go get the uh, actual paperwork and read it through it's a little bit mind-numbing but you still have to read it through that's what they've done to us and until we get a mass of people working and diligently in different pockets not focused on one way either on any subject matter but multiple approaches this, this we're going to see the continued worsening of the problem as we, everyone will just complain be the crick but be the crickets and allow it to uh, continue so so uh, anyway so this is um boy i just get shut down right there because i just know there's just nobody responding and i wonder why do i talk but at any rate uh, there's some of you that just might pick this up this is really coming down to our our 2020 hindsight should be plenty to know where we need to hit them. And I think I've been offering plenty uh, of how to do that, that any one of you can step up in a place, if you, any of these subject matters, and start to pull together, as I, I've been suggesting, uh, and move forward with it. Uh, the, I mean, okay, so they, they tell you that something's going to work, and, then it, and it doesn't work. Now we have the proof. There's an evidence here. They went through a Catholic school, no less. And here you have a separation of church and state. I don't think so. That was just an idea. No, they're pretty well integrated. And you'll see this, uh, particularly in the Catholic state, is a whole other other study I won't get into. I've done it before on different uh, different aspects of it. Uh, but again, this is all integrated somehow uh, for a future that they want. And this is the evidence of it for you. And you just need to settle down and formulate clean, clear thoughts and back again, work against what they've uh, rationalized is their validity under the color of authority they have to actually do harm and point that out. That you've, you can disprove by that there are many so-called theories they worked on that allow industry to harm people. And this is why you have to start being fluid in how you approach this. Okay, so let's move on. While they're forcing these vaccines that now can cause harm, and I mean, once we found out that the vaccines that we gave, they gave you was not... Uh, immune from being shedding and they could cause that we knew this was going to come out it's almost a matter of time you're waiting for it none of you will pick up these evidences or i anticipated this to happen i was kind of surprised it hasn't happened until now but here we have the evidence now what they claim is okay is not safe what they it's all by risk management i've been telling you and now we find out that they don't even want the last five percent to escape and they'll be willing to present to to in, in harm a potentially harm 100% of you, and it won't work, the, the, what the theory is they worked on, is exactly how you want to establish their failure to do the law properly and start to undermine what they've been doing. Because they also don't want to give you, and this is an indication about the access to homeopathy, they don't want you to have anything that you, and this is more another proof when you start adding this stuff up, that they want you to be able to medicate yourself, if you will, or treat yourself with natural processes that, as this statement is, as this the title is, as Americans distracted by impeachment, Congress silently killed cannabis reform despite support. So if you thought that a democratically controlled House was going to get you something, 
uh, to start with. Uh, here you have the dynamic uh, that uh, it proves that that's not the case. The problem I have with this is that those Americans are distracted by impeachment. I don't know, folks. I wasn't distracted by impeachment. And this wasn't so obvious what they did because they did it through an appropriations bill. And you have to understand to read those appropriations bills, see what they're doing, and things called writers and things like that. You have to be an educated mass on how they're deceiving you, how they take you out, how they uh, smile and shake your hand and say they'll help you, and then they don't fulfill what, what you think they'd want to do. And I haven't been an advocate of cannabis so-called up until I found out that it was helping people, and they were using it, and then they were being prisoned for it, well, the, the, the ultimate crime. And that started to shape my view more because I'm more of him into herbs and to me these plants are plants and you use them for what they can offer or not they're decided on for me it's decided on biological systemic conditions whether or not these certain plants all over the place can can help you or not and and so that's for me when they're not they're coming after you when Congress didn't allow the right of private even private to to eliminate private use because why? We understand they have patents. The United States government has patents. The United States the government is also looking for the bottom line of those people that it licenses its things to that they claim are better than the nature itself. And, and so uh, you have to look in this. I can't even, again, there's so much that goes through my mind about what you have to look at. Once you get a handle of it, it's not that it's so much. It's, I'm just talking from people that I don't see really have much of a clue of the, of the comprehensive nature of what's going on or the process, and then they try to come in and do something without really diligently keeping on to what they need to be focused on. And I've had to do it over years. I think I've got a good handle on it and why I even talk to you about it. Otherwise, I'd probably shut up and go do my own research some more. We address this stuff all the time. If I hadn't seen the Supreme Court, you know, I've, the evidences are having the Supreme Court uh, respond to a, a, a paper that we put in as a comment it didn't respond to our comment. They responded to the things we said in the comment, and they came back with a decision consistent with that. Or the administration changing the regulations of the Clean Water Act because of the definition of clean, what that of uh, water of the United States is. It, 100 percent of what we said in the comment, they removed. They had to change it because of the things that at least we pointed out. And so I can tell you from experience that there's a response to this beast that's out there that's harming us. And it is about witnessing an ex almost embarrassment and then getting the people inside the government to make the right decisions. Well, uh, as Americans distracted by impeachment, I don't know about being distracted, but within the context of the, of the way the appropriations bills work, writers were not put on to cover the continued abuse of people for the use of marijuana. Uh, again, uh, the, my take away is that the, the Democratic Party in control, like the Republican Party before it and other things, does not want you to be... Uh, medicating yourself or finding alternatives and and so uh, you can continue to be told by people writing so-called alternative media that you're distracted uh, most of the people I look at are not distracted at all uh, they also choose to be just uh, uh, entertained uh, and they're not focused on one thing to go do uh, they always focus on the things that they can't do anything about and, and that's the other thing it's another internal thing I think we have uh, so that we don't we can say we're involved but we're not really involved uh, now moving over to something I did talk about last week, a little bit different subject matter. It ends up being, again, all the same type of underlying underpinnings on how the this, um, you know, they call it a new drug. The homeopathy been around for years and years and years and maybe centuries. I, I can find evidence of it for centuries, but I didn't go back and study it that quick. I didn't have the time uh, this, this week. It got really crunched, but uh, the uh, they want to call it a new drug. That's a lie. That's a fraud. And you've got to be able to be there to tell them that. And if you're not, they're just going to move forward. And uh, when you are, then you may see action, may see a definite change, or you'll see hesitation, or you may have to throw in even heavier and move to enjoin it. Because why? Not, as I told him, a, a colleague of mine, I said, you're not just pointing out the failure. What you're pointing out first is an obligation and duty of, a, of the agency or whomever, the seat of decision, that was they were required to do the evidence of the failure of that of which is a decision that you're pointing out. You're not talking about the thing they decided. They always have deference to that. What they don't have deference over is what they were required as an obligation and duty to do. And so when I talk about subtleties and what you talk about, when you when, and this goes for everybody because it seems like we're in a code enforcement world because it's all administrative generally, 
that if you don't understand that subtlety, you're missing what I say. I'm not talking about complaining. I'm talking about utilizing what they do as evidence of a wrong that they were obligated to do otherwise. You have to know enough to know what that was. That's why I also told my colleague at the time, I said, that's why I work off of, for public land things, the practicability standard burden upon the agency. That, that's a big deal. And that's a standard they always miss. And so I'm not going to even, I've described a little bit about that. I'm not talking about what they did wrong. I'm talking about them violating an obje uh, objectively found obligation or duty of pro due, due process that, they're ki that they failed to do. And if you can tie it to intention, that's even better. We only use the failure as evidence of the f of the their election. And so, a subtlety, but big and Im immense subtlety to miss. If you're focusing on complaining, then you're going to miss it. You're going to lose it because they have the right of deference on what their decisions are. They don't have the right of deference on what they were supposed to do, and yet the evidence of which shows they failed, which is your cause. It's not what they didn't do. It's what the obligations and duty they failed. And that's how you see the Greens do it anyway. They f oh, they claim that the, an agency didn't do something due to due process, and they get it returned. And they get to pound on these agencies and soften up the agencies over time and make precedents against all of us. And so moving on here, a different style, but uh, talking about last week, about the uh, anti-semantic condition of the world, uh, that we hear today, uh, even after Trump, move that uh, bill uh, forward to un, uh, to question the funding or cause the um, university system administrators to question uh, what free speech they're going to allow. We have a, the Maccabee Task Force covertly funded 3,200 pro-Israel uh, events on the U.S. campuses. Showed us that there's a lie going on. This is another evidence of how the the people that have influence are actually moving this thing forward. They're already there before you get there. This is what I've seen universally. The, the people making the changes in the world are there before you even got They have systems in place. They have infrastructure and capacity before you even got there. And so this is how I had to de deconstruct that before we could start moving forward anyway. This was years ago. This is the same thing. Well, they're complaining about being, uh, the, I don't call it Israel here. It's Israeli. Prose is Israeli. I talked to you about it last week. These terms are very important. They can't even qualify what this is, but you see, they have influence of a president that gave them special rights, and they were working inside the system. 3,200 events were going on to to promote an, a foreign uh, Ill, un, illegal occupier that d commits war crimes at the campuses, and now they have favor. And I wanted to point this out just because I touched on it last week, and uh, uh, I think the whole almost the whole broadcast, but how they're doing this. There are, but this, this week it points out for sure, without a question now, we're no, given notice, they're already inside the system doing their work to hurt, harm you in some capacity, to soften up the enemy, you, in some capacity. And, okay, so that's, that's why I say you have to learn, to learn your battlefield. You have to learn how to go at this. You have to not engage them on their ground and in their terms. You have to find the objective basis that existed prior to their interference. And you can sub you kick out their knees and knock their knees out right there, and hopefully you, you take them down completely so that they're not just screaming about being a victim. That's really how you have to do it as well. As we are trained in our fight, our capacity to fight this, we're trained by what they claim, uh, what they come up with, and it's always going to be a deception. So you can't complain about the deception. That's not how that works. You have to complain about what you have to assert what they had no right to complain about and the interference with what they had no authority to complain about. And that's why you heard me last week, if you hope you're listening. Uh, I, don't, I know, I didn't get a lot. I didn't get a big old swell last week of people running in to see that, listen to that. That last week that I was talking about is, is applicable everywhere, and how you undercut it is to find a different terminology that's more foundational, if not the foundation, and then you assert they didn't have a right to interfere with that. They don't have a right at all. And you heard me go through that. Maybe a little rough because it's just broadcast me talking without laying it all out for you, but that's the problem. If I have to lay it all out for you, then we're a society that uh, needs a lot of work, if nothing else. And so last week, what I was talking about, we now see last week that they didn't need any help. 
and this uh, semantic discussion, the semantic imposition, semantic, excuse me, of the Semite thing, uh, which is I'm not talking about today, I'm talking about how you how you identify this, is proven the next week after I talk about it. How you should be looking, not that they do this, but that they're so well organized to have had it fulfilled that you're not keeping up with. And this is in every subject matter. It's why I don't focus on that. I f there's so many things that we need to do that I don't need to focus on that either. If you want to focus on all that, then you focus on it. It's not. It's irrelevant to me. If I told you before with what I deal with, I don't care what label you put on yourself, what your belief is, or how, how you think you're exalted and elite, I'm going to find, if you're, if you're outside the foundation, I'm going to find it pretty quick. You know, I'm going to target that spot. I'm not going to... I'm not going to get engaged with any dialogue around uh, any victimization condition or some higher pro uh, 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 elitism authority, some academic uh, foo foo. I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal with it. As you've heard me say uh, periodically, certain things come up. Academia comes in and, and trashes rural people. First of all, the word "rural" is derogatory that they use. They created that, and they don't even know what they're talking about. Why would I want to engage a lunatic like that? No, we're going to just focus in on the root part of that, which happens to be the law of the land relative to the people that have the right to be there, and that this academic mind has no title to all that. Notwithstanding, he's the beneficiary of all their hard work, those people in the countryside. And so, uh, again, I have a different thought, a different approach, whether or not everybody appreciates it, I don't know. I know that what I'm doing, what we do during the week, and what I suggest that we do and we get done, it eventually works out. We push through. Again, the colleague I was talking to, or no, another different colleague I was talking to, he just got a big uh, light bulbs came off for, on for lots of people in the county that he advocates for property rights, and he he finally got him to see. He's never been in. They thought he was his enemy in a way. They were. He thought they were. He was their enemy. He, they finally figured out. They finally got the the message that he's always been there to help them if they were just to listen. The light bulbs finally went off. It's taken ten years. How far behind our society is and its people and its understanding. And so this is uh, again. This is what we've allowed <coughs> allowed uh, upon ourselves. And we tend to go the wrong direction. I don't know why that is, and I, you know, I keep checking whether or not my uh, my in, my appreciation of that is incorrect. But I, so far, I don't think so. But with all that said, all this semantism going on, and all this action that should be taken on that doesn't go, uh, that isn't being done, or the action not correctly taken, we, this is coming all at the same time as well. They want to say, well, while you're distracted by the impeachment. All this other stuff went on. Now, I wasn't distracted by the, uh, this impeachment, but every th I was seeing all this stuff goes on. It's, I've told you, it's like starting to overwhelm me, like when I used to watch television. The news just got overwhelming of all the nonsense. And so this is I'm noticing social media has become the same thing. I can't keep up with all of it. And so I turn to the things I'm better at and focus on to help people that are interested in helping themselves or helping others like my colleagues that work with uh, people in the counties to make better decisions for the people of the county and, and then we now we get to okay counties are pretty powerful here when they're correctly managed if you will uh, from the inside and they're not necessarily that at all in fact our major problem is with the administration if there is one and the attorneys continually and yet we get stuff through by not being wrong once, understanding the terrain, not being wrong once, making the proper pointed discussion on the proper point that has no basis of argument. That should be self-evident. And so we just surprisingly have to show, show self-evident conditions. That. It, now we move into Virginia. And I, I think I did the Boogaloo thing. I talked about whether or not this was a, a dance or just dumb or whatever. I've, I've anticipated this. I wasn't really wanting to get into it. But some things have come up over many um, weeks now that I can't help but look at it. And uh, so I want to move now to the discussion on the semantic, the, the action, the improper action, what people get focused on, the truth they see and the failures that they may have, the things that they say, but the failures notwithstanding the things that they would say relative to constitutionality and things like that. And how we, I think, I I think I'm noticing here, uh, 
uh, almost lip service given to uh, constitutional principles, and then an action that doesn't meet that. And so I want to I want to go through my. Like I said, I feel uncomfortable doing this, but because it's not finished, it's not even beginning. It's just the starts of the routine of what I go through to pull together information. It's the reconnaissance I do on a subject matter. Uh, and this happens to be in Virginia, happens to be with the Second Amendment. It, it, was, it happens to be with the Second Amendment and the sanctuary cities. And that's what finally got me to start looking at this, uh, that I think people are headed the wrong direction. And then how to correct that and then use the a mistake as something of an empowerment within the framework of an objective basis, not opinions. Uh, it's fine, and I think it's great. I, I enjoy it, actually, some of it, seeing the, the you know, stick-in-their-face comments and the, mem- the memification factor, the pictures that you see with, you know, the statements on it. All that's fun, and all that's, uh, you know, you, you, they tell the governor, you know, you can't do this because we're going to be here to fight against you and this and that. Oh, and, and the Patriot and, and, and all this other things. Okay, that's all great, but there's a, a thing where the rubber has to meet the road. And I don't know if people appreciate the dynamic that goes on that I see, whether or not that you know you appreciate that, even from afar relative to that, that issue. I've also told you that we had to deal with uh, in a county that I, a colleague that I work with in a county, someone wanted to put a Second Amendment statute up and this and that, and we looked at it and I said, well, He's not asking, this guy's not asking for anything that's not already there. Why would the county waste its time? Why don't you just empower the point and then stay, and that's good enough. And so, but, you know, people want what they want and they get disgruntled if you don't, they don't get something. And so we had to ameliorate a problem, uh, a pro, uh, an ordinance that was really improper uh, on the Second Amendment without making the county look like they were against the Second Amendment, which they weren't. But it's people's understanding of what they think they know on what they think they want to see, that they think it's going to protect them, which actually caught my mind again. I've said this before. It's not even, I'm not even saying something new and just because of Virginia and the Second Amendment thing and the sanctuary cities. It's, uh, but it, it triggered that enough. I'm triggered now uh, to have to look at this uh, just for myself, if nothing else. That the process that I'm going through, I wanted to at least give you the beginning steps. It's certainly not going to be everything my mind goes through, but I'll do my best. So the last story that I got kind of sums up this whole point in Virginia. And it gets me to the point of going back into discussing some things I saw uh, on the Twitter and then my thoughts and the consistent thoughts that are in people. This is not like people don't think about this. I don't know that they appreciate what they are saying and then uh, and then going to apply. It's like looking at the vaccine, 100% vaccines, but not using that as an evidence of a failure that the government itself utilizes to harm you going back at that and that, that looking not at the, what they did there but look at the fact they didn't have the they had no jurisdiction or authority to make that style of decision and if it went that bad then maybe all of their analysis is no good and you have them reopen this entire thing and then you have the ability now to punch them and say no this is maybe why you better start bringing safety actual safety not risk into it you can't you have no right to put us at risk if you're willing to go after something that somebody in homeopathy, homeopathy has been maybe doing it for thousands of years, you don't have the right to be, call them a new drug and needing testing. You don't have the right to then come and give us half-baked uh, safety in, in drugs you allow for profit. And so let's move over here to Virginia billboard. And this is a, a big alarm. And I have a problem with all this stuff. I see everywhere, anymore, not everywhere, but in lots of places, people that I admire going off on all this hysteria instead of settling down. That's another thing that's really problematic for me. I see people relying on other other broadcasters for information, and it really doesn't hold water, yet they hold on to it like it's truth. This uh, link sent to me, Virginia billboards warn North, Nor- Nor- Northam, which is the governor, and Bloomberg sees gun seizure in two weeks. Now, I don't know if that's all true. I thought that this was coming in with the new uh, legislature in Virginia relative to this guns thing, gun thing. And uh, the infringement that the they wanted to, that people perceive they're going to do or want to do or going to do, and I don't, do not doubt it at all. I'm not doubting any of this. I'm saying that there's a different way to look at this. If you're going to talk about a, a Second Amendment, why are you talking about the Second Amendment in Virginia? That's not the Second Amendment of Virginia, first of all. And so you're not really talking about, and then not mentioning the Fourteenth Amendment condition for, on on Virginia. So you're not even talking about that, and you're not really referencing the one for the state. And so this is lip giving. 
Oh, you want to say you have a right, you want to say it's inherent before the government, but you don't want to empower yourself with it, and you want to keep it into the control of the occupier. So of any title, whether it's Democrat, Bar, bar Association member, it, for, domestic enemy without, that you don't see transparent to you. So the, the big alarm here, billboards are popping up around Virginia suggesting gun confiscation, pushed by Governor Ra Ralph Northam uh, and pa backed by Michael Bloomberg, is about to take place. So this is very important in the fact that you have a foreigner coming in. This happens all over, so don't think this is special. A foreigner coming in with a lot of money who wants to change the politics in your uh, state. This happens all the time with the environmental movement. We have to deal with it all the time where I'm at a relative to all the laws that we do for public lands and all this. It's not even new. This is what's going on. We have a foreign invasion coming in. And I think this is critical because you have to understand when you come from your own constitutions to protect yourself, these foreigners become invaders. And they become political influences that cause the problem that nobody in the state stopped. Now you attack the Democratic and Republican parties. You get them for omissions. You'll find this in the Constitution, which started to make sense to me as I started looking for what I was looking for. I had an idea what I was looking for. And man, the Virginia Constitution is kind of simple, and it was, it's straight on up, straight up if I was to uh, use it, to begin to make a foundation better than I have an inherent right to, uh, to, to have guns or whatever the words are you're saying. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to go back and get all the links, all the things. They're actually kind of cool, but they're, they're not going to work. They're not going to, Twitter, Twittering is not going to work. Your, 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 your conveyance of, of ideas to the choir is not going to get it. I, I don't know what ultimately gets this, but I do know a lot of people getting the right thing is going to be a lot better. I have an experience of having thousands of people, and this is where another thing happened. I understand that they're going to have a representation day in Virginia, the 20th of January, if I have that date right. If I have anything wrong, just fix it. Listen to the ideas I'm, professor, I'm, I'm promoting here, and they are a promotion because I guess I'm making lots of money that no one wants to listen to. I don't know. So I'm promoting all this to you just to have you have a second thought about it. Think a little bit differently. we got miners and we have ranchers that show up on the Capitol, thousands of them. And do you think that changed them? You think that changed their water water laws that they wrongly put in? Do you think that made it better for the for the miner to go mine? I can tell you it didn't. Absolutely not. It's what part of the what caused our lawsuit. When it made no difference what you advocate on the steps, I realized we have a different problem. It is the problem I've been telling you. You have an occupied people and you haven't figured out that figured that out and how to counter it. What will ultimately count an occupation is a terrible thing to think of in the ultimate factor. It actually realizes the Second Amendment. But that's not what we're supposed to do first. And so I've been advocating uh, the way to go through this by pen first to set up a record that justifies the need, if you have to go finally, to the Second Amendment. The reason for your state. The patriot idea that you can protect yourself. Uh, again, my mind starts to wander quick all the nonsense we, we tell ourselves that we don't work correctly. So we have an outsider, Bloomberg, a billionaire, has changed the politics of Virginia by investing, in, and the people of the state didn't notice that. So we're not far-thinking people. Uh, a governor who's a Democrat and amenable is, is adv advocating that before he even gets legislation, this is a done deal, uh, that your guns are going to be taken out. This fired up everybody. Uh, this uh, causes a, a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, dynamic and I'm looking at this uh, looking at it now from the realities that maybe people are not looking at the governor then is vowing consequences for counties who refuse to enforce new gun controls I don't even know if these are in, in vogue in, in, in enacted yet folks I mean this is the thing I'm a little confused but even if they are uh, why weren't the enforcements going on but I don't think they are I think they're coming and that's what the 20th uh, the, the day the 20th where everyone's going to show up and, and, and talk to your representative and they don't have ears to hear you my thought is a little different, just like I advocated it to the miners and the, and the farmers and the ranchers uh, were, were near where I'm at. Uh, you got to do it a little different. Nobody listened, and so they didn't get anything, and then they didn't give themselves a foundation. I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to show you how I kind of go through this. So he's vowing consequences to counties who refuse to enforce new gun controls. Well, my thought went immediately, these new laws that are supposed to be enforced by a jurisdiction, he's the governor, they're the county, they're a political subdivision of, this, of, the, of the state, they have certain obligations and duties to that. And so you're going to have to come up with a, a counter to that authority, because that's there, and that's what they're going to use. So he's vowing consequences, and this becomes important in how this thing comes down, and what you see happening, on how to start considering what you see, 
that the new gun controls, my thought immediately was, okay, so what's the remedy for proving out the constitutionality of a law? And what's the plus or minus on that? Okay, you advance new laws, but they're unconstitutional. Now what? Life, we, what we did in 2013 was to assert in a claim that each branch did not check the excess of a different branch, which is their inherent power to do so. There's a separation of powers, but there's also the check and balance. When you omit to do that, that's a failure that's actionable, the omission to do that. This is why I've said some of this, I think, if the judiciary was actually doing what it's supposed to do. It wouldn't wait for a complaint. It would be looking at the, the improper actions anticipated by inequity against the people that would violate. They would come in and they would write a notice to the legislature that this is the reason why you can't go there. I think that would be a lot better for us than what they do is they wait till after the fact. But that's opinion. Okay, so I don't know if you have that in Virginia. That's another thing. I don't know about Virginia law. I don't know about the statutes. You'll see in the Constitution, as we read through this pretty quickly here, that uh, the, con the legislature has been given certain things to do, like define certain terms. For all of you all, they get all freaked out about these definitions of what you think you're making up in your mind. Uh, the authority goes, the statute is the body of law inside which the definitions are, are made for you to use. You do not use other definitions than what they are defined. Anything that's a question, they take a step back and they use a dictionary that's de declared by the judiciary to be the dictionary they'll use. In the states I've seen, there's some states use like the Webster's 1828. Uh, I'm going to use some of those definitions here, but you'll find they're, in, they're, they're not really helpful for us for education or knowledge, ex and comprehensive knowledge, and so I'm going to use a couple dictionaries as we go through uh, off the internet, just to show you that this is, I'm kind of going through quick and looking at the terrain I'm working on. I'm doing the reconnaissance for this thing. Uh, the, 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 the Northam is vowing consequences. Well, consequences are what? Uh, they're going to be within his power in the, consti in the Constitution. They can't go outside of that. If they are, you should be ready to, to counter those or help counter those or go after the ob officers that are uh, obligated to do that. So why did this even come up? I had questions. There are questions, and they're looking at the dynamic. Why I'm developing a framework for myself on what do I have to anticipate? What might be going on here? Now that's making up some stuff a bit, but I, I'm trying to prepare myself for the, the wildest type of approach. Why is this even going on now? It's not just because Bloomberg put dumped a bunch of money. Could it be? Well, maybe it is. But is there another potential uh, avenue going on? When you look at the federal side and what's going on in the country, and the United States now gave you evidence in 911 uh, that they will uh, come out, allow an attack, so called, or set up an attack, and not defend against it, and then blame you, uh, one of the culprits in this has to be the federal government. In other words, the agents of this will, wouldn't care about your Second Amendment either. And so you're going to need more than you attacking back because you're going to be, you're already deemed to be an enemy combatant. You have to defeat that. Now, this is not a truth. It's not proven. I'm saying it's a potential, and I'm going to be looking as I read to be countering that as well. And part of that's countered by how I address this whole thing. In other words, is it something if you claim to be some derogatory character, and you can come back and show that the law that you used is, let's say, even administratively in their books and they were wrong to call you that because of what you did, you've now proven, well, you've proven quite a bit. You've now also shown, as I've told you, you look for the color of authority to, to do something that was wrong. And so I've established extortion and coercion when I've got an, an authority to do that. This is playing in my mind as well. I'm, doing a, I'm looking for all the angles of, of the attack and how I would counter, how I would pre- position a discussion. This is all going on in my mind as I'm looking at this. But what caused my mind in the question, why is this going on? And just ideas, folks. Informant reveals FBI's already vast powers to investigate right-wing extremists came to mind. As an example, I did some research, found this article. I don't even know if I want to read it. They were saying the FBI is sitting inside. they got, got, got agents everywhere. Okay, they're everywhere. They're infiltrating all these places. That got me thinking, okay, 
okay, so the the way this works is they try to inflame the people to do the wrong thing. Well, Malheur was a good uh, thing, a good uh, point right there. They they had people, agents inside, uh, people giving advice that were agents, and then you know they can lie to you. People haven't figured this little thing out. They know what happens, and they don't quite run and really believe it's going on. So that was one of the things I threw out. Okay, so we have this situation. Why would it be going so wrong already? In my mind, my in the context that I think. Uh, would be because they're being people are being misled. Uh, another story popped up: undercover special forces in hostile states, United States, uh, in the United States. As I reported to you for what is, I think it was uh, North Carolina, I think that was a massive. Oh, oh, and this was also a tied to what the Jade Helm. So th this is what it, you notice. Not not much seemed to happen, but they were doing as we reported then reconnaissance. The government, the federal government, is doing reconnaissance, military reconnaissance, and all this setting up and testing how the people respond. And uh, I don't know that I found us responding in in such uh, proper ways. But this was just the thoughts that crossed my mind. We could have something else going on, and my point is, is well, I can't stop that going on, but I can protect against becoming the the thing that they want you to become and I only know one way I, I think one way to actually have that accomplished and that's going to a foundation that they are subject to and can't deny or can't touch and you hear me talk about this all the time so I'm not talking anything I've, I'm not mentioning here anything else I'm, I'm setting up the things in my mind that started to, to that were triggered by a certain set of observations relative to the gun issue in Virginia that really is beyond even the gun. It's, it's, there's a whole other thing that could be going on. I don't get paranoid about it. I don't blow this thing up. Because the answer I will eventually come up with in this when I finally come to one is one that anticipates all the potentials and possibilities. The best I can and to the, I guess, the limit of my ability to conceive of them. Because a lot of times this stuff starts stops making sense. And when I tell you you see something that stops making sense, you really have to take a step back and try to do the analysis. Now, I really dislike, that's why I, I break off on the mimetic, the mimetic response to this. Something else is going on. People perceive the problem and, and, and yet they respond with more of a, an, an immediate response instead of saying, wait a minute, there's something, there's a play. If I can say it that way, there's a play. So uh, undercover special forces entered into hostile U.S. states. There was a whole thing that went on. Remember Jade Helm? They, they, I understand the, the exercise, but there was a telegraphing of some things. And, boy, people fr just lit up about it. But you notice it calmed down. Well, the government did what it needed to do. It got the intelligence that it wanted. Now it shows up in, it possibly shows up in Virginia. Why do I think that? Because they're not stopping anything. They're allowing a Democratic uh, majority as an excuse when, in fact, when you get into office, there is no party, actually. And this is another problem that we continue to allow. I'm not sure how to resolve that. Maybe eliminate parties. I, I don't know. That would be a good thing, I think. But anyway, any rate, that's not for me to say in this case. I have to anticipate that. I'm trying to show you how you think about this. Is it, right now we're setting up c categories of possibilities. and how? Where is this thing in face of how people are responding to it? And then we hear what the story is relative to Virginia and why it's got, the governor's going to go for consequences against its uh, people in the, count, in the counties uh, who refuse to inform. What's this, 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 this uh, what is it, breach of the peace now, isn't it? See, this is important to start looking at the better terms as you, as you move along. Well, the gun sanctuary movement was a story that says uh, it's exploding in Virginia, coming out of slate. I think that's another, uh, what, uh, I think that may be a progressive uh, view inciting certain things. And they go through and they talk about uh, as a, uh, I guess, a promotion. It was done quite a while ago, this story. A crowd of gun activists writes holding signs of guns save lives and crime criminals with guns don't care about laws. That's the mimetic response that they promote here. That's what I say. You can't respond to that. Yes, it may be it's a truism, but that's not what the so-called right to bear arms is about. It's about so much more. And you all know that, and you'll make memetics about it, but you won't start making these line items of a complaint that may be similar as we're looking to the Declaration of Independence in form. But you have to have a basis to even to do that, and so that's where we start to have to look. Uh, they talked about this, uh, this uh, a long while back, about the sanctuary movement. There was a big deal on sanctuary movements. Uh, th that actually didn't strike me. I knew there was a problem with it. 
I knew it was uh, right, so if you will, right-wing conservatives try to utilize the spin on a liberal twist. But the, the, as the Slate document, I think it was the Slate article points out, there's a, a false equivalency that they mention, and it's true. It doesn't mean they're true in what they're saying, it, but there's a false equivalency. They explain that to you. So here's the concepting that's going on. And what they do is they throw this out there for people to consider, and they try to diminish this capacity. And I would have to say their, their false equivalency was correct because the people that were doing the constitutional discussion, first of all, referred to a federal constitution without the 14th and then not the state, and then went to mimetics that weren't, were a false equivalency. And so the, the advocates of anti-gun are utilizing the false equivalency to promote that's the only position. And you'll start seeing the conversation confined by officials what they do. But we'll also see a potential problem if we were to just look. What finally got me to look at this is I, it was a, a, a map. And I'd, I took notice of something else before this that got me to look at this even more strongly and realized that we had a, for my interpretation, and I've, I've, I've voiced this, I think, back on Twitter. In fact, I, have the, I think I'm looking at it right now. Uh, the sanctuary map that was developing. Now, a year before they're talking about sanctuaries, now we've got sanctuary cities. It's a so-called conservative answer to the liberal use of sanctuary for immigration. This is totally incorrect to do, first of all. Secondly, the false equivalency, which is described in Slate, actually describes the condition that you need to be careful of. That is what sanctuary actually is. That's being missed by the people that say they have a right. And this happens across the nation. I'm not focusing on Virginia or Virginians or Virginia people. I'm talking about this is how we mess up. Uh, we think that the right is the only thing that there is. And we forget that we have to give ourselves a vehicle to, or find the vehicle in the compact that we've agreed to, whether or not we really thought we agreed to or not. We live there, and uh, we have to start looking at this. That The word sanctuary popped up after I had seen another map that came up that showed the so-called red colors were the conservative nature of the state of Virginia that were fully opposed to, to gun, gun control. It was almost all red. There was only a couple blue. And that reminded me of the metro areas that we have in many states where a small, uh, just a small few counties have the major population and they control things. And I'll tell you, that's just an excuse that can't be won by a Republican Party given that they're on that side because if their numbers would turn out, they could turn all that around and they didn't. They didn't anticipate the influence of politically what Bloomberg might have been able to do to make them a super, I think it's a super majority over there in Virginia that is going to now threaten this whole thing. It's what, what, the, what the Democrats in the House of, of, of Representatives of the United States government would have wished for for the Senate and then a president that they could work with. And you're seeing how close this place is to destruction. When people are going party lines that are not, their agenda behind the scenes, advancing things that are really an invasion, a treason, if we can use the word. And this is where we have to start to work now, go. But we get to the sanctuary map. The sanctuary map kind of tr got me to thinking seriously now about this because it was shown that most of the state was not, not liking all this, notwithstanding the state was now politically democratic. And I understand that I didn't get the, the, the tweet out, but I think Gary said his daughter made the observation too. How is a, a state so red, so conservative, have a, have a political, politically adverse uh, government? And so that immediately raises the question of voting and all that. But I, I have a funny feeling maybe not. I've seen that it's just apathy, even in political apathy, uh, the political party apathy. People don't understand what happens anymore. And so they don't really think some of this stuff is, is, is important. They certainly don't get where they should to look and see if there is voter fraud locally. You see how it starts to matter. Voting locally really is a problem when someone's going to take control of it. Because it matters, even if you it matters when you when some even small group can get a hold. The minority actually controls the majority. The astute observation is: How can a red so completely ninety five percent red state have a a blue a super majority or majority in in their government? Interesting question. Why why was that? There, I think there, there's more than just election tampering. I, I think there's a lot to say there that we could look at, but that's not our problem. Our problem is that we now have a threat to a constitutional 
provision in the Constitution that was to limit government uh, to prohibit it from interfering with uh, this thing called an arm. I, don't necess I do not agree that it's a firearm because that's a federal commerce discussion. We'll get into that. We talked about it. The problem with Virginia, I also understand, is potentially, potentially, we haven't got to the Constitution yet, but it's a Dillon rule state, and so we have to treat that a little different. And I worked with Gary a little bit on that uh, what, years ago, and so I don't fully remember how that works. So, but it doesn't, it may or may not come into effect because we haven't got to the Constitution yet, which everyone claims is their right, but they don't, I don't hear anybody going back to the sanctuary map was a real problem. Why? Because it says sanctuary. The right-wing interpretation, the conservative interpretation of sanctuary used by the liberals for immigration is not what you use here. It's no different than making a sanctuary county for mining. It's irrelevant. It makes no sense. The law dictates that. And so my view was, and I know what sanctuary means. It doesn't mean what people think it means, obviously. And I respond that way. On this map is what got me to start thinking seriously because I said people have seriously got this wrong. They're walking themselves into the very jeopardy I tell you to avoid. I've told you for a decade or more, maybe not on this broad network, but on the others as well, to know, to make sure you understand how to stay out of the jeopardy that that's set up as a trap for you. The word sanctuary. I respond uh, here, and this is after I had said I wasn't really looking at it. The more I look at this, I'm talking to Gary here, uh, you can find this on the internet. The more I look at this thing, the more troubling it appears. Do people realize what sanctuary means? The admissions, consent, and failures reliance commits. Example, it's not protection or reciprocity, whether in right or permit. And that's that, that permit to, that you get to key, conceal or whatever, carry. Yeah, that one. That commercial one? Yeah, that one. There's no protection or reciprocity in these relative to sanctuary. And then this is what I said, this is what it means. Free people hold up with constitutional rights? What? In other words, why would you claim a sanctuary when you have a constitutional right that I can find now is inherent, which is even more powerful? What I call antecedent, what the Supreme Court may call pre-political rights. And all these things are running through my mind a whole lot faster than I'm able to explain it to you that I'm trying to show you the thing that's going through my mind uh, over this time, how we go and start to set up a better approach. Sanctuary is legal de definition. We can go, I don't know if I can want to read it all, a refuge where process of law cannot be executed. That's a clue. Let me ask you, when it's criminal, what they're going to bring on, is there, a, in the United States, is there a refuge that you can take from the execution of criminal law? No, I'll just give you the answer up front. So this is our first problem. Sanctuaries 2, of definition 2, which I get off of the legal dictionary. This, you can argue with me about the validity of this. I'm just doing this for ideas. If I wanted to go deeper, I would, and I would have to go into some court cases, and I'd want to find out what the state talks about all this uh, to do more. And you need this is where you, you take your thousands of people that are going to show up on the steps before the 20th, and you start dividing them up into people that will start working this all out, come together, pull you, synthesize your information, and come out with hopefully something else explain to you. You have to come out better relative to the Constitution, giving yourself a no different than you would in a court case standing to even have a say, uh, notwithstanding what the uh, or experts and officials tell you is only to them to decide. But moving on here, uh, the uh, legal dictionary on the internet says uh, sanctuary is a legal definition. Uh, it's number two, sanctuaries may be divided into religious and civil. Religious and civil. Well, in this country, United States, I don't think we do religious much anymore. And here's a reason why for that. It's only civil, correct? So we're not talking criminal. And as soon as they make something criminal, you don't have a sanctuary. Not in the United States. The former were very common in Europe. The religious, religious houses afforded protection from arrest to all persons who accused a crime or pursued a debt. The kind, this kind was never known in the United States. And so the resort to sanctuary is a failure. It was a failure when I first saw it. I thought it was, in a way, I thought it was kind of a joke. But then it, I saw the map and I said, 95% of the counties in Virginia believe it's something. On a constitutional right. And I'm going, what? Are you kidding me? That's not a path I would want. So if it's not a protection against criminal procedure, do you think 
that there's going to be a protection at all. Understand how immigration works. The city of San Francisco may not give resources and cops and whatever to help ICE, but doesn't stop ICE from coming in and making arrests. Will be the same distinction that the state police do in, in, in Virginia relative to the local authorities. And so sanctuary, again, is a real problem here. I don't know why anybody's not talking about it. I don't know why it became a, a, such an issue, but I think it was a reflex action without thought. Uh, anyway, not a thing to do. So not a counties now are sanctuary cities, uh, sanctuary counties. That's fine. So now we find out that that's not a protection. Now we're also going to find out what the governor was saying. There's going to be consequences. Because if that's all you've got, you're still subject to enforcement. And we can, we can deal with that. In this article, this statement in the legal dictionary goes on, civil sanct it's a civil sanctuary or that protection which afforded a man by his own house. Understand this word here. This becomes critical in the, also to look at in the, in the Virginia Constitution. The house protects the owner from service of civil process in the first instance, but not if he wants lawfully arrested and taken refuge in the house. No place affords protection from arrest in criminal cases. A man may therefore be arrested in his own house in such cases, and the doors may be broken for the purpose of making the arrest. And boy, I can hear everybody screaming about my Second Amendment right here, but there's the sanctuary problem. The thing I didn't understand, I thought it was a joke. It's not a joke. People actually believe in this thing. Now, we've got a problem, because they've established sanctuary status which is really no status at all, except it will do one thing if we can get it changed. Semantics may help here now, not made up to do the a war crime, to do a criminal act, but to enforce the what? The inherent power. And so we're going to have to go look. As I look, and I'm telling you, this is a long way to think about this. I'm now looking for a way to take what sanctuary was created and re-coin, re-adjust that to mean something I can use. Because a sanctuary for the sake of sanctuary is no sanctuary at all. And so we go to Merriam-Webster's uh, since 1828. Like I said, some states make that the official dictionary where the statutes are either not defining a word or they're incomprehensible as an implementation to be on this decision for Merriam Webster says the immunity from law attached to a sanctuary. I ask, what immunity is attached due to a criminal act? It's not stated in the definition, and therefore we have a problem. If you go read Merriam Webster's, you think there's immunity attached. When you go read about the fact of the application, you don't see any at all. And so here's the problem about uh, interpretation across dictionaries and just using them only to gate take a lead. My problem for me is I've known all this from before. This is like, this is international law stuff as well. If you if I get to it, I won't get there. But I mean, just saying, just when you think of it that, that way, there, I've used sanctuary. I used it to forestall the BLM. And only when I was missing for a little while from a place up in the public land did they come in and steal all my stuff. To show you that there is a use for sanctuary under international law, but not in the context of what they're doing in Virginia. And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I want people to start rethinking this very quickly and so they can become more formidable in what they're going to offer. Now, this is reflected, this failure of, of, of actual uh, immunity. Now, why, why would you do a sanctuary? Why are you treating yourself to be holed up in a place when you have a right anyway? And the right is to protect the state and your safety. What nonsense does this make? I, I, don't, I really don't get some of this stuff. But, uh, but anyway, some people do. And so, the evidence is before me that there's a trail that's been taken that's not correct. Then we hear this, right almost on point, and right in time as well with the declaration of the, uh, the uh, consequences that are coming. Virginia AG, Attorney General, Attorney General, I put emphasis on the general here, declares Second Amendment sanctuary cities have no force of law. I, I have to agree with them. Absolutely. You just saw it. They have no force of law. They cannot stop a law, a criminal law. But by just by, def, by the basic definition, they are no sanctuary. Another thing you, didn't, you may have missed on this, those of you that are paying attention, but may have missed this, the Attorney General made that statement as an advice to the counties. You have no protection 
against your obligations through a particular thing. That's his job to send advice to who? The political subdivisions of the state. Which I find interesting that you've got to be careful on the word state and commonwealth. In Virginia, they use the commonwealth determination the term, and you have to watch what that's doing. He says here, the attorney general, neither local governments nor constitutional officers have the authority to declare state statutes unconstitutional or decline to follow them on that basis. And I found a lot of fascination for myself looking at the word that, if you didn't. That basis. Oh, on that basis. Well, what basis is he not telling me? Because, see, I don't know. I'm looking at this. What am I look? What's the terrain here? Well, there might be a basis. It's just not that one. I hope you picked that up quick. This is how fast this works. It's not that hard. Then he goes on to say, and I'm just taking the news as notice. I'm not even going to look. I'm not tracking down at this point what what's the fact of the statement. I'm running quick to figure out the reconnaissance on what I might be dealing with. I'm taking it for true right now. I would later go in and qualify all this. And if I had a crew of people, that's what we'd be doing to qualify all of our positions so that it's foundational. Uh, we may not ever state it. We would just know that it's foundational. And if ever questioned, we would produce it then. So in other words, you don't have to have a lot of statement here coming when you have the foundation to show later. He goes on to say that neither the federal constitution nor Virginia law recognizes any anti-commandeering principle that allows the localities or local constitutional officers to refuse to participate in the enforcement of state law. And that's true. But, what did he say there? Did you hear it? Neither the federal constitution or Virginia law recognizes an anti-commandeering principle. What about the, what about, why didn't he say Virginia constitution there? Again, as I'm reading this, as fast as I'm reading it, these are the thoughts coming to my mind. I'm trying to show you how you start picking this bones of this thing apart. It may be something you can use. Now I'm looking, without knowledge of what I'm going to go find, I'm looking for the, I'm now looking for the Constitution. Absolutely. I also knew that going in, didn't I? And so he has that basis and nothing under Virginia law. What about the Virginia Constitution? Might I find something there is a question. I'm going to go look here. When I get done with this article, which I'm done, here's the point. This is a legal advice to counties that they are now obligated to follow. If they knew what they were doing, they would be able to take this and turn it around and say, it was that basis. Why didn't you disclose the other basis, another basis, and get him to commit there was none? Why? Because we're looking for an omission of his office. We're going to develop how he is outside of his own office, if you understand the dynamic here. The counties are empowered now to not accept the advice based on other things they know, but they got to keep their self tight-lipped on what that is. They can in suggest that the that basis was not described and that he didn't disclose any other basis, and he didn't describe the Constitution. Leave it open there. Okay, so I can get at this guy now. Then I also know something, uh, if you will. I also know that he's an attorney general. He's a bar member. Now, you, this is a side a bit, but if I can find that his uh, membership to the bar would uh, not want guns, then maybe I can get him under a breach. I can get him under an ideology. And this will move later on when I see things in the Constitution, things like emoluments that might come into bear if I can develop the facts behind it to show what? At least an appearance of impropriety, if not the fact of um, a domestic enemy under the color of a lawful officer doing some problems. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to expose felony. We'll find out why in the Constitution uh, here in a bit as I get there and almost getting there. Expert on Virginia Constitution. Now, uh, as I read that, available to commit a uh, comment on gubernatorial removal succession issues with a story out of Wake Forest, promoting some guy. Why am I reading that? Because it also came up how we're going to deal with these with these politicians. We're going to get rid of these politicians. Tar and feathering came up. Eh, not likely, but okay. So it's it's a good thought. Sounds cool. It's what miners used to do. I get you. I'm with you. But we're also coming through a different time, and they're not going to allow that. Well, well, you could get away with it for a while, I suppose, and enough of you could cause it, but there's not going to be enough to do that, I don't think. And I'm not saying to do it. 
Again, miners used to do it. Attorneys did not last in mining camps. They just got run out by on a rail if they survived. And so I know that part. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making a record more thoughtfully than making a sanctuary place that's not at all. And now the record by the state's being made through its law officer to make that so, and nobody's countering it. All the counties have to counter that right now. I won't even go into that side of it. I just said that they showed you a couple statements. How? Well, how do you get rid of these officers then if they're doing all this nonsense? Now that you find yourself in a red state, if you will, conservative state, and your supermajority is now Democratic. We don't know how that happened, but it's the so. It's so. Now, how do you get rid of your officers? Well, so we go over here and we see the expert on the Virginia Constitution says there's two ways. Removal governor from office, and he explains it. We can go through the impeachment process where he says, quote, you get them for malfeasance in office, corruption, neglect, or duty, or other high crime or misdemeanor, close quote. Well, that's very cool. But you have to go read and find out that you, the people, don't get to do that. The same legislators that got into office that make the majority do that, as you see on the federal side. It's interesting how this is all kind of tying together. You'll notice that this Wake Forest guy suggests that there's only two, and one is also about the disability, physical or mental disabilities in office. Now, I could go to a far extent to show how, how I, it could be done, and a group of people could do this, as one element of the capacity of the pile of the logs and the pyre they're going to burn him with here, find out that trying to go utilizing the color of authority to change something that's written before that was existent before the existence of the state as a mental disability is an avenue i don't know that that's the one you want to choose it's a lot more difficult it's also what it's getting whomever has the authority to do that to do that which happens to be the same people that are taking your rights away and here's the point you're establishing the futility that's in the Constitution to have accomplished what it was supposed to do by the terms of the Constitution for the reasons it was established by whom? Those that instituted the covenant, uh, made the covenant, all right? So, the covenantors, yeah, we're going to get into some of that here. Here we go. So, he offers that you can impeach, but we can get him for physical disability. Who do you hand that over to? You'll find that in the Constitution. I'm kind of doing this a little bit backwards here because there's so much to read. Uh, you'll find that that's in the same people that uh, are making the problem. So, futility is important to show that there's no remedy there. It is a, a coup, if you will. I don't want to put it in those terms, but you just got to keep your mind open into what you're looking for. So, the expert will only give you two. Was that what the uh, AG was talking about that way? I don't know, but there we go. We have a way to get rid of the problem, but it wasn't declaring the law unconstitutional. My question was, when do you declare that law unconstitutional? Well, normally the judiciary does that. Is that still the only way? Well, let's go look a little bit here. Let's get to that constitution. And I'm looking to do certain things, as I've told you before. I'm looking to figure out how I can get them into felony, treason, high crime and misdemeanor, notwithstanding the fact that the impeachment, we're told, is sitting in the, in the legislative body itself, like you see at the federal level. I'm looking to put these same harms on us, and I'm looking for an ineffectuality that the Constitution may provide for, but not obviously, that none of the experts say exists before I go to exercising the right to bear arms. To protect what? You'll find it in the Constitution. Let's read the Virginia Constitution some way in a couple of sections. They're pretty short. Listen very carefully. It's very important to listen to the words. And what I do, again, my mind is working on establishing things. What's your standing? What's your authority as a people today? Where is it provided for? What is the claim? Do you have the method, the remedy written in that you can do that? How do you get to that remedy where there's other remedies? I am not talking about reading yet the Supreme Court cases on certain terms to find out the validity of their interpretation because you're up against that as well. I'm only talking about reconnaissance of an issue, how I would begin to address it, and more formidable to making a, a non-protective sanctuary condition. But I now know, because it's all the work that's already been done, someone's going to have to take and take the sanctuary statement 
not as used by the progressive liberals to avoid implementing federal law through immigration, but as a vote of what? We signed the word community in the Constitution, that it is a sanctuary and the concept of protecting as a population of people the majority, establishing a majority view under using that word. This is going to be very critical and subtle to do. I think it's going to have to be done. But I'm going to use now the black and white foundation. If you agree and you want to use the Second Amendment, I suppose you're only claiming to be federal citizens. If you want to use the right to bear arms in Virginia, you have to use, I think it's Section 13 of the Bill of Rights. If you use that, you have to have the right to use it. This immediately eliminates all foreigners who want to claim sympathy. And I said that because what came to my mind was what happened in the West Coast relative to these organizations that pop up that want to help you, like the three percenters, like the Oath Keepers, these outside organizations, unless they, have a, they are documented in the state as a corporation, which is not, does not have standing even. Corporations are dealt with in the Constitution of Virginia a little differently as well, and all this has to be parsed down. Those are not the ones that have the standing to do anything. And if you let them lead, you're letting, it's like a stocking horse problem. They're the wrong people within an organization to do anything, to give any advice. This is going to have to be done by the, well, well let's go read a little bit. We'll see by whom. And this starts to lay it out. It lays out the organization. This Virginia Constitution is kind of interesting this way. It's nice and clear on where the power comes from, how it lays out who is what and where, and bring certain words in certain ways that you have to keep track of as you distill this down to try and figure out, how do I move away from now we've got a profession of a sanctuary that's not a sanctuary under criminal law against the consequences that the state's willing to put in, against the advice that the that is legal, by, legally binding upon the, count, the county subdivisions. How do we counter that? It's why they did that. It's why the Attorney General came out with that statement. And when he came out so quickly with that, I think that was a plan. They knew they had to do it that way. So you're up against some people that, are, or, that know what they're doing. Uh, let me read the Bill of Rights here in Virginia. And believe me, this is not complete and comprehensive. This is as I read it, as we came on through it, and how, to, uh, how, we, how I was analyzing to get a path through. It still has a lot of work to do. I wanted to convey to you how I go through things eventually to come up with what we do. Uh, to uh, stop or hesitate, cause a hesitation in those that may come against us. I've never dealt with the sec Second Amendment. Uh, what we had to deal with was a, a misstep by a people who were good-natured good but didn't want to do it right. I'm seeing the same thing happen here with the sanctuary statement and the reliance on it when I thought, I think, I think I see a more powerful statement that needs to be made, which can be delivered on the 20th not merely as a talk with your representatives, but to show them notwithstanding the political party uh, agenda they want to push, they would be in maladministration of government. They would be in felony. They would be in treason. And I don't mean you just talk about it. You lay the elements out. And I don't mean long, uh, long-winded discussion. This all comes down in bullet point sentences, actually. So I'm just copy and pasting the authorities coming out of the Constitution, and then I'm attaching elements of their violation, whether by commission or omission, right? That's always I've been talking to you about. All the same stuff. Here, Bill of Rights of Virginia, a declaration of rights made by the good people of Virginia in the exercise of their sovereign powers, which rights do pertain to them and their posterity as the basis and foundation of government. When I talk about you, I tell you about establishing your foundation. There's your statement. Who are you today? You are the posterity. Now, by the sovereign people and their posterity, you, you have established a a, 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 the basis and foundation of government. Section 1, equality and rights of men. Not corporations here. Men. And that, doesn't dis dis that, does that includes the women. This is, should be like mankind. Not human. And this is important because man to man become, man to man discussions and issues become stated in this Constitution. It's pretty interesting to go read through it, not corporation. And so, I also want to say I don't necessarily like the word ought. 
that's what the verbiage of the day was. And that's another thing you have to go back to. But ought seems to be weak. It should have been. I thought it should be shall. But ought also anticipates a con um, a conflict, and that's another problem. Why I don't like it. But no, if we hear it, we'll have to look past it. But we will utilize it as a shall. Uh, equal equality of rights of men. That all men are by nature equally free and independent and have certain inherent rights of which when they enter into a state of society they cannot by any compact deprive or divest their posterity namely the enjoyment of life and liberty with the means of acquiring and possessing property and pursuing and obtaining happiness and safety now, in anticipation isn't it having a gun a property isn't it for safety isn't it to protect your happiness? And if you start hearing this, then you start to say, see why that first section is important. It tells you that the posterity and the people that make the Constitution that created the government is not the people, and the people that made the government and their posterity had inherent rights. This is what I tell you is the antecedent, what you might hear out of the, maybe out of the Supreme Court of the United States as the pre-political. These are rights that pre-exist the government itself. How do we know that? The Declaration of Independence before the government, the whole of the United States was formed, explains a people that stood up against a foreign power. Well, foreign to them at that point. It's an inherent in the people to do so, in people to do so. It also says, though, there's a compact. And this is very, you got to, okay, so now what's a compact? I'm going to go through some definitions as we go. The compact is a contract, isn't it? It's an agreement. And it's a society created by agreement. So you have to be inside. You can't deny this. Those of you who want to be anti-state, you can't deny this acceptance because who you're dealing with is coming through the color of that authority. And you're, it's up to you now to expose that as a color and not an actual event, namely the enjoyment of life and liberty and the means of acquiring and possessing property. How about keeping property? How about to keep and bear property? Can you see the consist a a consistency with this a Second Amendment, so-called? It's the 13th article in our Virginia Constitution regarding the, the arm. I say it this way because there's a contract here. There's a contract and a performance that has to happen, a prohibition. It's all contractual. That becomes important because the Constitution eventually talks to the obligation of contracts. They have to be honored. It also talks about ex post facto laws. If you're the posterity and the Constitution says something else about the prohibition, the legislature can't come in and change that. That's an ex post facto law. Are the laws that they're going to throw on the county lawful is the question. And it's self-evident they're not. But you can preload the record, the public record, that they're not instead of making it a question. Again, this is all the thoughts that go through my mind as I'm reading this stuff. I mean, so much more. It's amazing. I sometimes wonder how I, how I even work this through. But here we are. I'm, I'm trying to tell you slow motion now how we do that, how I do that, how I put this into, into life, if you will, back, reinforce it. They cannot deprive or divest their posterity. There's nobody in this government established that can deprive or divest people. That's your language. You're going to be deprived or divested, aren't you? You're going to be deprived on something inherent, not even something within the legislative capacity. And you're, and you're doing this because you have to build the authority yet. You're the sovereign people, but you've established this government with certain powers, and they have a foundation of government you've established in compact, contract. We also find out something very interesting here as well. The people, the source of the power section 2, that's just a title, may not mean nothing in Virginia. I noticed that the titles mean nothing in law, but you have to read the text. Uh, we give an idea. They give you an idea possibly, but maybe not. you got to be careful. This one says in the text that all power is vested in and consequently derived from the people. That magistrates are their trustees and servants and at all times amenable to them. I'm not sure how to parse that through fully, but I see the word trusts, trustees, which means that estab the compact established a trust. And the magistrates are amenable to the people with the power. You're not seeing the legislature have this power. You're not even seeing the magistrates in the judicial department having this power. I've told you power is all powerful. Do you go to the magistrate? Can you strong arm a magistrate? Well, no. 
But you, what I've shown you is you can show that they're irrelevant and they have to uphold the will of the sovereign power. As I've showed you in patent law, in that one statute in Oregon, Oregon 12, uh, 12040, says the judiciary can't interfere with the patent. There's no judicial authority. And therefore, the only thing a magistrate could do would be adhere to the printed compact. Number three, the government instituted a, for common benefit. Now, this is a critical one to understand because here comes the potential, as I see it, of the the way that wasn't spoken to by the omission of spe of the of the of the AG to speak in advice. But here, but that's my opinion. You'd have to work this through. The government is or ought to be instituted for the common benefit, protection and security of the people, nation, or community. There's your first word, community. It's not the one of the New Age progressive liberal view. It's one of the compact of people coming together that live in their locales. That community word should have a definition better by the Supreme Court of that state, what it actually is. I'm going to assume it's your counties just for the sake of this discussion as I'm going through where, what direction am I going in trying to pull out something better than a sanctuary that does me no good. The security of the people. How are you secure without a gun of any of the capacity you need to stop an oppressor, which is the government itself by its encroachment and its assertion that it can do it? Self-evident to my mind. Here we go. Or the community. This is where I keyed in, the community. I assume it's going to be the county semicolon of all the various modes and forms of government that is best which that is best which is capable of producing the greatest degree of happiness and safety and is most effectually secured against the danger of maladministration and whenever any government shall be found inadequate of contrary to these pur or contrary to these purposes a majority of the community hath an indubu in indubitable inalienable and indefeasible right to reform alter or abolish it in such manner as shall be judged by most conducive to the public weal that little at attached statement brings in a potential for a question on what is the most conducive. You have to address that. I don't want to go into that one quite so close. I think you will, as self-evident as the problem is, have the self-evident conducive uh, answer. This is like an equity answer. In fact, this is actually inequity. What are we actually after in this section? The power is in the community where the Constitution doesn't provide for a safeguard for found, proven, maladministration of the government itself. I'll in assert, insert and assert, that appears to me to be an option that the community, the majority, find maladministration, which you would state, how, and that under this section of law, not by sanctuary, but the declaration that sanctuary is the will of the majority of the people, that it be contained in inherent capacity this right is the uh, the interference of with the maladministration which this section of law gives you power as a community the counties the majority of the counties that red map proving that the majority feel that what the in, the elected officials in a democratic party with intent to harm the state interfere with happiness and safety, the fact of happiness being interfered with that you have to deal with it, the alarm that's been caused already to cause the use the sanctuary designations as the alarm that caused the harm, proving it that the sanctuary statement is actually one of a majority, that together the counties are in majority, that there's a maladministration afoot, that you use this provision to start to go through. Don't use the sanctuary as a place and resolve. You use it as a place of community majority. The declarations. They may not on their own stop and declare an law unconstitutional. They do represent the majority of the counties in the state are against what the government, 
the maladministration and, and the exam the the evidence of maladministration against the will of the people. The the what the, the words are on the Constitution. I'm not going to use any new words. The pro posterity. You have to be of the posterity in Virginia. You can't be a, an association, a group of people. You can't be the have a special fancy name. You have to be a man in a man or a woman in Virginia. You have to claim the posterity, and you have to claim that it's being uh, your happiness is being uh, interfered with, uh, infringed, and as well as your safety. Self-evidently, the taking away of your right to protect yourself that would help you keep the property you're also supposed to keep. Again, I'm just using these words. They're going quick. You would tie this together a lot tighter. Uh, again, my mind had a lot cleaner statements before I started to kind of go through this by trying to tell you about it. Again, to me, it's just a flash on what has to happen. And in short sentences, you list it all out. It's right here to go through better than claiming sanctuary, which has already now been denounced by the lead uh, legal authority, which he can be shown to be outside of this power. He has no power over this power. That, again, sanctuary equates not to being a sanctuary city. It's a sanctuary of the majority declaring that what they're doing is a maladministration pursuant to the Constitution. Why? You have to have standing as a county to bring the complaint and petition. The warning. You're, now the question comes, does your local sheriff, can they arrest for a felon felonious maladministration of government when the county, the community says that that is a violation in that county? Can a majority of the county sheriffs do that? Where they can't declare a law unconstitutional, can they enforce maladministration? Well, we have to go find out a little bit. What are the claims? Well, if they become crimes, and you can su uh, suggest so in the record or prove it, I would have to tell you yes. We've come up to number four here. No exclusive emoluments or privileges. Officers are not to be hereditary. I want to touch this a little bit because the emoluments came to my mind as something in kind given to a pre an agenda, a political party predisposed to commit these treasons to force an agenda on people, which I can see as a foreign imposition like sustainability and things like that. Uh, Philosoph philosophies that, uh, like you see the knotted barrel uh, in the 45, uh, that was supposed to be a peace, uh, a peace statue, which actually is used against you. The semantic use of that is reversed, and they use it in order to take away that, because they say that taking away that from you brings peace, and we know it doesn't. Uh, the UN is what I'm talking about here. The sustainability factor. We know that the Bar Association through that AG has a voice. We know that it's political, the gun rights for the, uh, the, for the Bar. We can find, I can find the, the articles for you. I think I may have some links as we go through. You, conf you now create that the uh, AG has an ulterior motive that's a, d a domestic threat. Uh, the same thing with the governor, another Democrat, political party. You don't do it for the political party. You do it that, that they're in league together. The Bar Association's in league with this same overthrow. You don't do it by your words or that there was an inherent right. You go to the Constitution that declares it, and then you show the maladministration when they omitted, did an omission to, to create a color of authority, which they have, to make it look like the county didn't have an authority, which I think... Section 3 gives the community for mill administration, which can, I think, certainly can be brought forward. What am I saying? You want to stand on the Second Amendment federal? How about if you stand on the, on the Third Amendment in Virginia? Showing that the infringement against the 13th is not given to the officers of the government established by the sovereign power. The people. How is the individual, I said man or woman, how is the individual in port, uh, involved? How do you have standing? When I was just talking commu community or posterity in class, you go back and find out in the same constitution, it says that the general laws given over to the general, uh, the general uh, assembly are to the individual. In other words, the individual is, impo is harmed or is uh, inf affected by the general laws. There's prohibition against special laws. You might even go down that avenue. Identify this as a special law. It has to be. It's not a, not a general law. It can be. It can't be. It can't be. A, it's not constitutional on its face where it violates the inherent authority of people, the sovereigns who created the government, the officials of which 
are implementing that the, the color of that. And how, okay, so then we have to get the defendant. As I was thinking about that, you have standing. How do you get the defendant? He took an oath. I don't even talk about that too much here. I just wanted to point out. How do you get them? They, they took an oath to enter into that compact created by the sovereign power of the people that is implemented down to the individual, giving the individual standing. Am I talking sanctuary cities here, folks? No. That's not how that's not going to work. That's a setup for the takedown as far as in fact I'm I'm really fearful about that. I've got a real bad feeling about the way that was set up and people just jumped onto that. And had no secondary no other no other avenue whatsoever. And so I guess I'm compelled today to talk to you about it this way, for as, as ad hoc as it might be. A separation of legislative, legislative, executive, and judicial departments. That the legislative, executive, and judicial departments, in Section 5, judicial departments of the Commonwealth should be separate and distinct. And that the members thereof shall be restrained from oppression. By feeling and participating the burdens of the people, they should at fixed periods be reduced to a private station, returned into the body from which they were originally taken to vacancies and all this and that and the other. It's a standard for the statement of oppression against the people that are your representatives. The question is, when they commit crimes, are they still your representatives? Well, there's a provision for that as well. All right? So how would I go and find that? Now, I start looking for words. I'm going to go look for a term because i got a compact. I've got a laws that are supposed to be done. I told you there's, for the sheriff, you want to go back to the sheriff and say, what's the authority? He may not be able to declare a law unconstitutional, but he can arrest for found crimes, at least alleged, right, with probable cause. You have to develop that. Let me go look for whether or not there's immunities. Let me go look or see whether or not the, notwithstanding the uh, lack of oppression that can be put on a legislator to be able to represent you, which is reasonable, that they can only go so far. And we go down to Section 9, and they talk about it in the Constitution, immunity of, of legislators. But members of the General Assembly shall, no, not ought, shall. See what I say here? There's a different problem in the ought thing. But anyway, shall in all cases except, there's your savings clause to crime, in all cases except treason, felony, and breach of the peace. What have I told you for years? The three things you try to pull out of them. These three. Who'd have thunk it's right in the Virginia Constitution? It, they are not to be oppressed by outside influence except in cases of treason, felony, or breach of the peace. Is your focus as a community effect down to the affected individual which the general laws could apply to to bring up Section 3 and come after the any member of the General Assembly for those one of those three points? Remember, impeachment has the other statuses that you can't do. It's going to be the political parties that you put in office instead of denouncing those. But the but there's a members of General Assembly are uh, amenable to some law enforcement. That's outside of impeachment, isn't it? Because those don't even make the list, do they? And so it would be privileged from arrest, except for treason, they should be privileged from arrest. Uh, and except for felony, they should be privileged from arrest. And such breach of the peace. And that's been kind of reduced down to disorderly conduct. I want to do breach of the peace by violating the law and the fact that the sanctuary county's designation also evidences not just the majority of the community attempting to remedy maladministration and working, working from that authority to do so, but that is evidence, the fact that they went to declare sanctuary not to the sanctuary of the people residing as a holding up but as a declaration of the majority of the community coming out, declaring the maladministration, and that is also evidence that they had to do that of breach of the peace by the officers or members of the General Assembly whom have invoked that in the people. So this is how breach of the peace here gets used, and the, you're, you're uh, in Virginia, the General Assembly is not immune from that. That's not an oppression when they do that, see? But hey, be privileged from arrest during the sessions of their respective houses, and for any speech or debate in either house shall not be questioned in any other place. They shall not be subject to arrest under any civil process during the sessions of the General, uh, General uh, Assembly and during the 15 days before the beginning uh, or after the ending of the session. Let me go back and did you hear it? Uh, they shall not be subject to arrest under civil process. Did I say before there's no sanctuary for crime? It's proven right there. 
And it, that section right there proved your sanctuary designation is useless. So you have to, I would say, you change the, the nature of what sanctuary, declaring the sanctuary was the majority deciding that they are going to protect from the maladministration the attack on the Second Amendment, which does what? Bring you safety and happiness. It brings your ability to maintain property. In the first instance, not waiting on some agent called a cop. All right, so what I'm offering here is you go, you want to, don't give lip service to the Constitution that shows the limit of the people that are working. You can expose the omission to declare these things to the county by the AG to show another another aspect of they are not dealing with the com the Commonwealth, but on a special agenda. The attack of which is the very reason for Article 13 of the Virginia. Uh, constitution. And so I'm going through just looking the Journal of Proceedings, Enactment of Laws. Um, that's an important one to look at as well. I don't want to I mean, run out of time here as I keep going, but I want to get down to the one, the, the uh, form of laws embrace more than one subject which shall be expressed in the title, nor no law shall embrace, and nor shall there be any law be revived or amended with reference to its bill, but the act revived in the section amended shall be reenacted and published at length. This stuff has to be open. It also has to be lawful what they're doing, though, right? And so Section 15, effective date, uh, well, it wasn't Section 13. I made a mistake. Well, that was in Section 2, wasn't it? Oh, I jumped down. I'm sorry. I, when I did to the breach of peace, I jumped down into section, the next section. So let's, let me go back. The breach of peace. We can go after him for the fact that the sanctuary means they caused the alarm in the counties. They breached the peace when they, they attempted to attack. And I needed to go back up because I jumped. I forgot that when I went to the word search, it jumped me back up in, uh, the, into the next section. And so that, that kind of messed me up here. So let me go back up uh, to the, uh, excuse me, get down to 13. I think it was 13. The, um, oh, okay, so before I get to 13, let me go back up to the Bill of Rights. I jump down to touch about the immunities, which don't exist for crime, no sanctuary, even for the members, even though they have civil sanctuary, just like the word sanctuary de defines, proving again the word sanctuary is not the thing the county wanted to do and expect not it to be enforceable, exactly what this the Attorney General came out to tell you all, but only told you that there was a that it, the counties can't declare it unconstitutional didn't mean that the people don't have another option, notwithstanding the expert says there's only impeachment or physical or mental disability. I think Section 3 comes up. Section 9 says prohibition of excessive fine, bails and fines, cruel and unusual punishment, suspension of habeas, bills of attainder, and ex post facto law. There's your bills of attainder provision that they're not supposed to do, which this ends up becoming, and your ex post facto law is a law, not a constitutional amendment, which attempts to abridge the inherent power of the people of the uh, and outside their sovereign compact. It, this law would be an ex post facto law against the right. And actually, it's a little different because it can't change that that way. It attempts to change the Constitution without the lawful authority to do so, given to them the legislature by the sovereign power, the people. The majority of which, in a community, can move against maladministration, which I think this is clearly at least maladministration, which I would also pull into the cause of felony, treason, or breach of the peace evidenced by the very nate that all the counties had to waste time and energy and treasury and life and whatever people alarmed to make a sanctuary in the first place don't use it as a place to go hide use it as a place through the constitution to announce to the legislature the will of the community it's right to check in mail administration if the rest of the constitution fails you have that if you go read that constitution it says that General warrants of seizure, search and seizure prohibited. This would seem to me to be a general warrant. A general law is not a general warrant when they come to take your stuff. That would be a violation in my mind. Just I'll just quickly run through. Section 11, due process of law, obligation to contracts taken to private property, prohibited, discriminatory jury trial, uh, civil cases, not criminal. I guess they can discriminate and cribble. Uh, the, the, and this was, section is kind of tricky because it talks about... Uh, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. The property looks as if it's landed property. I'll suggest to you that your, your constitution is a property. 
I'll suggest to you that there's intangible properties. Uh, you need to declare those and know that they're there. This is what my mind goes through. The, the, this is one of the sections where the Constitution declares the General Assembly has the right to, to, to uh, determine what public uses are. So that term is specifically empowering, uh, is, is given to the authority of the General Assembly to declare. You can't make that up. You have to go find out what they did. And so we have a public use. Can they take uh, uh, the right, uh, the inherent right, as a public use? No, because it was before the government, right? It was before the, the political power. I mean, before existed antecedent, as I reference it. Antecedents has a different authority as well. That's why I use that one. Uh, it's up to you to understand how you understand. I I'm, that's how I understand it. Uh, anyway, so here they have the right to do public uses and property can't be taken, all that compensation nonsense that they talk about. You have to understand about that. They talk about land, but I'm going to suggest to you when I read in here, I can tease out, not so hard, but a little bit. You have to kind of work it just a little bit different, that the law itself becomes the property of the sovereign as a covenantor, right? As someone who gives over uh, to a, a covenant, an agreement. And what do we hear there? Uh, there's uh, obligation to contract. When they took on the oath, to observe the Virginia Constitution, they took on that they would not interfere with the obligation to contract, which is the Constitution. All right, so maybe I should move over and look at that. Uh, first of all, let's look at breach of the peace. Uh, uh, and I, as I talked about it, I, go, I think I'm done with that. Let me go down to, uh, I don't want to go to the freedom of speech. Militia standing armings the, the, that a well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people, a body of the people, trained to arms. Each, each have to have one. The trained is the proper, natural, and safe defense of a free state is the def definition for why you are seeing the maladministration. Uh, therefore, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They're doing it infringed to what level? Well, the point is is that you don't know what level, right? Because if you're going to keep that free state and happiness and keep yourself happy, you have to have enough force to th keep away any threat, don't you? As you're defining how this would work out now that you found your power in the Constitution to counter what the Attorney General Bar member didn't explain. But the right of the people shall keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed as standing armies in time of peace, should be avoided as a dangerous to liberty and that in all cases the military should be under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. What's the civil power in a mental administration, folks? It's another inroad about that uh, and how you pull that in. You become the authority as the people, not some outlight oath, oath keepers or, or, what, or, or three percenters or the patriots or any of those. You're a man or a woman uh, as the posterity in the state of the sovereign power checking maladministration where what no other branch did they omitted the republicans in the in the legislature omitted to outcry this as well there, there's no no they may not like it but they have a constitutional authority to declare it to the people to let them know what's going on in the government not just coddle it all the the administration uh, the executive should not have come in in compliance that shows they intend to harm them violate this provision and the individuals violating their oath okay how can you keep this free state and keep your stuff when you're not able to and so let me then move on what's the breach of the peace is a charge of making a lot of noise or behaving violently in public and dis disorderly conduct that's what it's been reduced to for Merriam right it's a whole lot more uh, you understand here that breach of the peace is a common law offense. This becomes critical in the analysis as well. You'll find that these things you're looking for uh, are all common law. They're of the people. This is how this comes through. This is how you the, the elements develop. Uh, it's a common law offense, but it, it presently governed by statute to many states. It presently government is it? If it's maladministration, there's no statute that can come against it, right? You have to assert that. Anyway, so I have a definition for breach of the peace. I think you can find the definitions in this to extract how they have violated, the, the made a breach of the peace. I can also do the felony. I can probably go to the treason, although that takes a little bit more work. I think I can see it, uh, that you would then what? You cut through the immunity clause, or that section 9 in the governmental side that I jumped to, and you use those elements in order to take away their ability for the government to protect them under any plausible view. This is not just about the Second Amendment. That's what they're after. 
we got to explain how they violated their obligations, duty, the oaths, the pledges, the, con the framework. You show that through the Constitution. You don't give lip service in focusing on one. You have to empower yourself with the rest. So they use the word compact in the first section. Uh, we want to kind of move on to see what we're dealing with. It's a closely and firmly united or packed together, occupying little space. A brief and to the point, none of which we want, right? Marked it, marked it by having a short, solid physique. So lots of definitions that aren't what we're looking for. Why would they use the word compact? Well, when you get down far enough, there's different language reasons. Uh, the, it's an agreement or a covenant. A compact is an agreement or a covenant of sovereign power. People coming together and their posterity, which cannot be diminished. You just state all this, and then you state you're of the posterity, and you're the individual that is affected by the general law, which is, by their own declaration, intending to circumvent the reason for the state itself, the happiness, the freedom, the security. You're not safe to have that taken away, and they know that's the case. But then anyway, you stick to the short facts. So let's move from compact. They say it's a covenant. Let's move to covenant. It's a common law action to recover damages for breach of such a contract. Well, did you know that, folks? I thought that was pretty pretty funny. I started laughing because this is why I went down this trail. This is actually, covenant is actually a remedy. It's a covenant of the remedy of the breach of the contract, which is the compact. And so you start formulating your cause, your reasons for being there, this way. And do not rely on sanctuary as being holed up somewhere and you use it as a as a conditioning, a, a proof, an evidentiary factor for the majority of your community against the maladministration, then apply this as your standard. I think you're going to go a lot farther, a lot better. I think you create a document that has this together instead of standing on the steps with your signs and or going in and talking just the rabble rousing uh, what you think your rights are, and you present a document that's laid out like what I'm saying and better. I mean, certainly a lot more concise and lay out, and then say, here's the consequences of what you're doing. We're going to uh, maybe extension you do it correctly. You say your local sheriffs, which are conducive to enforcing the law, will have the probable cause to arrest you for your breach of the peace, for your felony, and for your uh, treason as described herein kind of thing. The covenant, uh, legal dictionary, you go through and you read what these are. There's covenants that run with the land. Consider, uh, again, this is all consideration. This is looking at potentials and possibilities. Consider that your constitution runs with the land, doesn't it? the territory described for the state. And so you have this land-based law of the land covenant running as well. You can interrogate for the possibility. It's one more log on the pyre that you, they built for themselves that you come by. Not because, oh, you have an inherent right. You explain how you have the standing to assert that counter to the action and get them in a felony that's going to destroy the state itself. In breach, by breach, or by treason, or by felony. You don't make that up. You don't, don't say that either. You have to have the elements for it. Breach of the covenant, I have uh, in a couple definitions. It, it's, uh, I guess I'm reading here because it says, breach of the covenant refers to the violation of an express or implied condition of a contract to do or not do something. There's commission, omission. The implied is even there. This is why I say you have inherent powers in the government to check itself. It's not as separated as you might think. I have a discussion here for the price of the, of the breach of covenant. It gives you, you talk about price. Well, what's the price of the destruction? What's the, what's the cost or what's the, the value of the destruction of the state that kept peace for you? Is what these people are doing. I have a, a bunch of other links I'm going to have to give, uh, just tell you about. I went to the emoluments and let you go to the their philosophical views as an, a profit to them, which I think you can do. I, I would think about that, but I may not actually enforce that one. Uh, the point is I'm looking at looking over a situation. How is the American bar continue to attack gun, gun owners? I have a, a link for you there. How is this attorney general just fulfilling what the American bar has been doing forever? As I've told you before, in its fulfillment of being recognized as an NGO before the UN. The same place that has a so-called peace symbol of the not tied in a barrel of a gun. I don't know of anywhere that's, that's ever uh, taken away guns that there's been peace. Just looked across the United States and the cities that's going on. And so, I, I have the Constitution for Virginia, those that are interested. I have some more information about what uh, does majority rule with minority rights means. 
But they, if you can uh, put, wrap your mind around that, you can form another discussion relative to these things where a minority party has now confiscated your state and become a majority in that capacity. And then you are left with the tyranny, the very thing that the, the symbol of your state in Virginia shows, which I have to say is the, the, the weakest depiction of a, of, a, of, of a symbol I've ever seen. When you look at the progression of the symbols, and I thought started thinking about that, it was a really amateur uh, depiction of the state seal. And I wondered, because it happened around the 1950s, it's not, not, not consistent with that corporate overthrow as well, which I don't have time to go research. That could put a whole other complexion on this. Anyway, I hope uh, I've hopefully I've elucidated some things that you can rethink about this. Back off the sanctuary, use it for three other purposes instead. Empower it. Don't stand in weakness of it, and then do what you all need to do about that, and really be the example for the rest of the people. Grimmer, thank you for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Appreciate all you do to allow me to come here and click on and hook up and talk to the folks and all y'all that are spreading the word, folks. Just get it out there. Uh, I know I talk fast. Take notes. I don't know. Let's do this thing better for 2020. Hindsight, I think we have, we've seen enough. I think we actually know what to do. It's time to get out there and do it. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass. <laughs>